Okay, they like to say join us on McLean's TV, a man who knows all about how to win all Ireland's triple all Ireland winner with Ron and the McGinley, and it's great to have you here. Uh, I want to ask you first of all before we talk about the All Ireland final, just the state of the game. Whenever you go back to the start of the championship, there was all the talk about it being lopsided. Mm-hmm. The championship uh, had a change, and then we had the headlines of lack of discipline and uh, various stuff like that. It, it's an area that vexes me. I think discipline is the one area because every county is guilty. We've all driven a horse and carriage through the whole disciplinary rules. Something needs to change. Absolutely. I think it reached really farcical uh, levels this summer. And for me, Throne's Tiernan McCann got charged with bringing the game into disrepute. For me, the way the disciplinary system has been run, the GA unfortunately are doing a fine job really of of that themselves. Uh, The disparity with club players and how club players are treated and their success or lack of success in terms of getting suspensions and county players where it appears almost harder to get suspended now than 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 anything else like it used to be I know back whenever they were bringing in video evidence you had to have video evidence showing that you definitely did not do the crime now there is video evidence showing the players definitely doing the crime and yet they are somehow still getting off so I uh, I don't think the players are happy with it they the players want to be punished if they do something wrong they want to be punished but it, it's the fact that it's it's so hit and miss and there's again there's a lack of uh, there's a lack of uh, a consistency across the board and even for me as a throne man the way that they they brought in an eight-week suspension for Tiernan McCann completely out of the blue i know from chatting to them that they felt they wanted to do something so they wanted to make a statement even though they knew there was no there was no place for this in the rule book they knew it was going to get turned over they just done that but that's like, it's just such a amateurish way mm-hmm. to run the disciplinary side, and when the game has moved to such a professional way in just about every manner, bar the obvious one, uh, it's such a pity that the disciplinary side of things is just it's it's a no man's land really at the minute. You can't make up rules right throughout the championship. That's for Congress and for special committees, and hopefully, Aidan O'Farrell, the president, will will get will you know will get control of this. I I personally feel that lawyers and barristers have no place in the whole idea of discipline. It's very simple, I would almost go the rugby way. If you get a red card, bump, you miss a match. If you appeal, you miss two matches. A bit like rugby. And people say, but sure, what happens if somebody's innocent? And, and my opinion is, okay, well, somebody might uh, be unfairly treated. But the way it is at the minute, everybody's being unfairly treated because every county, and we're all to blame. I get very passionate about it. I think we're all to blame. Every GA supporter is to blame uh, for the lack of discipline, I believe, within the game and the powers that we need to do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, myself, I get confused in the number of <laughs> committees and the number of abbreviations for them committees <laughs> at all the various Kaplan. levels. It's just, <laughs> it's so hard to make head or tail and, and you think they've had their appeal and that appeal has been turned down and so you'd expect the suspension stick and two days later it's been overturned by another body and it's, I'm sure the, the disciplinary people within Croke Park are frustrated by it as well like they would have the best of intentions for the thing but there's been just too many wee decisions over the years that have slipped and now instead of having a, a blank you've you've just a you've a net that everybody can get through on on a whim and unfortunately again from a club player's point of view you would look at it and think that the big players seem to get their way much faster than than the ordinary club players you know so Look, it's a huge area of concern and oath of the diving and that end of it to, to sort out. I think that's a very easy fix to make. I think trying to make their rules and regulations more watertight and their own application of them rules more consistent is the biggest challenge for them. I think it's wrong too when you get pundits and stuff like that who come on laughing on TV and say, well, sure, if you just take the DRN, you keep them up to half two or three o'clock in the morning, they're going to turn around and get that fed up and turn around and go, right, okay, away you go, you're free to play. Like, you know, I, I, I have nothing against uh, the likes of Dermot Connolly, and unfortunately, he's the player in the eye of the storm. But when you lift your fist and you punch somebody, no matter if you've been uh, led to that as part of the dark arts, you should not be playing the game the next week. By any stretch of the imagination, you should not be playing the game the next week. No, and again, I'll go back to this charge of bringing in, the, um, bringing the association uh, down. That can be levelled to anybody, but when you see players being able to punch, strike and get off on the biggest of stages, straight in front of the cameras, well caught, and they're, they're still able to get off, it's just what message is it sent out. And again, Jermaine Connolly wouldn't, 
he would have been man enough to accept his punishment. But when he looks around and sees everybody else getting off, well, what's good, what, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And so everybody's appealing and everybody seems to be able to re- have regular room. Whenever, as you say, whenever you get the legal profession involved, it becomes very murky. And certainly uh, there's so much to look at, but they're, they're going to have to get a lot of guidance from the legal profession to try and make the rules more watertight. Uh, and, and everybody would want that. And I'm sure referees at the minute who have a tough job and come in for plenty of criticism at the best of times. What what do you do is at the minute as a referee out in the pitch when you're... Why would you be a referee uh, if you suddenly give a player a red card and you play in the following week? Absolutely. Like from, from the reaction of the black card coming in and trying to implement it to now <coughs> yellow cards and red cards and just all the time you're seeing black cards have been rescinded after games. and it's, it's badly, badly up in the air. We went from a situation several years ago where everybody was looking for more consistency in refereeing and we have went steadily down the hill where referees remain inconsistent because we've given them another card to deal with, which has, in my opinion, been poorly thought out. And now the disciplinary system that is overlooking that just looks at the minute unfit for purpose. So hopefully, i say it's a big work for Croke Park, but I know them men in there would be wanting to get it right and they'll not be happy with the situation. Could you not do a simple thing, never mind about legal, just basically say that there's a, there's a letter, it's a contract, every player, every manager, every county board signs a code of conduct and the code of conduct is if the GEA say you miss a match, you miss a match. It doesn't matter if you bring in the greatest, if you bring in the Attorney General, it's tough. You've signed the code of conduct, you know what I mean, within the sport. I think that would be a very simple thing. Absolutely, that would sound potential but when you get down into signing contracts, that sounds like a pretty professional environment to me, so the GA would need to be very yeah, careful in terms like, of you know, any... Like, you know, we all try to play the game. You play the game for what it is. It's the spirit of the game. Yeah. That's, that's actually been solid, I feel. No, absolutely. I fully agree. And they've, they've got the, the drug end of it and anti-doping end of it is, is very, very tight and very tightly run. Uh, but just the disciplinary end of it. But look, I think it's been highlighted this year and they'll be very frustrated. They can't have an incident... Where, where players are obviously doing significant misdemeanours uh, and getting off with them and being able to uh, keep playing in the same championship. It's, it's, it's I also think what you're saying, I think some players are almost embarrassed by it and most players would probably accept, look, at, I lost the head, I hit your man a box, I got it. I'm entitled to lose the game. I think most players would accept that. Mm-hmm. I think it was a Damon McGee's tweet mm-hmm. where he said that the one time that he didn't get off was the one time he was actually... Uh, was 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 actually innocent, and all the rest of the times when he did get off, he was guilty of sin. You know, so players absolutely would admit, and whenever they step over the line, you expect a consequence. But the problem is that the, the consequence hasn't been consistent for a long time, and with that, then players say, "Well, they'll they'll have a go," or maybe not even them, but certainly the the management teams around them. Uh, so look, it's it's not great, and unfortunately, it's that type of thing that is more talked about this year than the football on the pitch, uh, which has unfortunately too many times went to form and the strong teams appear to be getting stronger and in the in the vacuum of great stories on the pitch, we've filled it with the, the stories of discipline and finding injury and uh, all of that there, which isn't what any of us really want to be talking about. I'll finish on a late note, I remember the time the whole controversy about bringing the game into disrepute, some fella put it on Twitter and says, hey, what about the hot dogs that they sell in Croke Park, does that not bring the game into disrepute? <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny. <laughs> and uh, thanks very much on that one.